Welcome to the tutorial on filing making for filing lovers and weekend woodworkers who has a little or no woodworking experience and limited resources but always dream of building their own instrument with their own hands from scratch, at home, for real. I know right, it took me really a long time to think of a good title. Anyway, you get the idea. If you haven't watched it yet, there is a three-part preparation video where I talk about everything you need to know before start making a filing at home, including wood choices, the templates and form, and the tools you need for making a filing. And there are also some cinematic full build videos where I show you the entire build without saying a word. Make sure you've checked them out too. And now, enough talk, here comes the first part of the step-by-step -step guide. If this is the first time you are making a filing, you will have to first make two underlaying sticks. They are just two sticks with 8mm thick and wide and long enough for the form to rest on. You can use any type of wood you want. I use pine as I just happen to have a lot of it. This is actually a very good practice for you to get familiar with your tools as you won't be very sad if you screw it up. You can simply make another one. Just make sure they are 8mm thick. Now, we can finally start making the violin. Generally, we start making the violin with the blocks. There are six blocks in a violin. The function of them is to keep the ribs, the back, the top, and the scroll in place, as well as making the structure more stable. For the dimensions, the width, the length of the blocks may vary a little from form to form. Just make them fit with your own form. And I would suggest you to make everything a little bit bigger first to give yourself some room for error or a margin of safety. As one of the many things I learned from the making is try not to make a perfect fit the first time you're interacting with something because as the saying goes, you don't know what you don't know. And most of the time, you will only know it when you screw it up. And that's too late. So I will usually leave everything at least one to two millimeters bigger as a rough cut, then adjust and refine them later. For the final height, the upper block and also the ribs there should be 30 millimeters. The corner blocks and the lower block are 32 millimeters. And the straight side that faces down to the bench most of the time will be the top of the violin. The most important thing you have to care about here is that the grain need to be as vertically straight as possible or they will tear up the way you don't want them to when later you have to pine the ribs out from the form. For the growth rings, the upper block and the lower block should be north-south-wise aligned with the form. For the four corner blocks, as long as the grain are vertically straight, then it's okay. The direction of the rings won't affect the sound. But for cinematic reason and also the OCD demon behind me, I did a star shape here. Stradivari did it in some of his filing and Goneri del Jesu didn't care about it at all. So you can do whatever you like here. I'll start making the blocks by placing the template that I made for fun on my piece of spruce, draw the lines, and saw it out. You can use your thumb to navigate your saw when you're starting out and try to make your cuts as strict as possible. Then use a block plane or a chisel or anything you can to cut to the line and make some blocks that fit to the form correspondingly. You will have to make the top and the bottom and the size that faces the form perpendicular. You can use a square and put a light behind the blocks and the square to check them from time to time. And if you find that the blocks are hard to cut, simply apply some water on with a brush to soften the wood to make it easier to work on. And remember to clean up the water on your tools after using because you don't want to rust them. Sometimes the area for the blocks on your form may not have a sharp point for you to put the blocks in. You can either trim the blue area here a little or open some space on the form with a drill or wraps. But of course, trimming the blocks is much easier. When you have your blocks, your underlying sticks and the form ready, then let's cook the glue. Put the glue into a glass container and put some water in, high glue first or water first, doesn't matter. The ratio between glue and water is around 1 to 1. It is not easy to tell you how much exactly, you know it by experience. 
Just don't add too much water at first because it will be easier for you to add water later when it's not enough than the other way around. Put a coffee thermometer in the water so you can know the exact temperature. The best temperature for cooking high glue is around 60 degrees, which is 140 Fahrenheit. If you move the temperature up, the molecules that make the glue sticky will start to fall apart and we don't want that. After the water go up to 60 degrees for a while, the glue is basically ready. Use a paint brush to stir a little and pull it up. The ideal form of good high glue should be a bit like honey. Apply the glue onto the blocks and the form, and when using it, avoid fan or all sorts of moving winds as they would cool down the glue very quickly. Clamp them together and remember to check if the underlying sticks are in place. And I did open some space inside the form for easier clamping. If you have any questions about that, you can go check out the videos on templates and form for more information. The glue need 1 hour to dry and 24 hours to be totally set. Don't touch it before it is set and you can work on the next step right away if you are in a race or you can just call it a day.